You know, there's so many things that previous generations accomplished. You know, the anointing on a Spurgeon, his his ability, uh, Wesley, to preach to Whitfield. That their anointings we need again. We have a role to value and respect the person who said yes to God, the Spirit of God that marked them to bring such change. Hey, Bill. Hey. We are back again, and um, we've got some fun topics to discuss. We're going to talk about grave sucking today, <laughs> a, um, a term that I don't think we coined. Uh, one of our critics or a concerned citizen uh, coined it, but uh, it stuck, and it was quite amusing when we first heard it. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> but I, to give a larger context for this, like I've been wanting to write about this for a while, and like, and people are like, why don't you just address this? And it's you know that whole deal. And we have done a few things about this, but right. for me, there's a, 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 an interesting story of like our culture in it and our history and uh, how we don't, how we address things and when we address things and why we'll address things that are that are all in there, um, in this topic. So. The, uh, our backgrounds are different. Like you were raised charismatic mm -hmm. and yeah. long family history of unusual uh, supernatural experiences and the power of God hitting you guys yep. In, yep. in various ways. I, I was raised non-charismatic, was um, a little bit, you know, kind of interested, wanted everything that's in Scripture. But I remember I didn't speak in tongues until years later, until I was in my late 20s. And, mm -hmm. and I, I told the Lord many times, like, I'm ready. Ready, set, go. Uh, anytime. Ready now. And uh, but I, you know, as I look back, I was so worried about doing it wrong, and I thought I had to have this pristine holiness, or this it had to be this pristine, perfectly spiritual moment, and um, and just kept me from risking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, a lot of what our journey has been on is like learning to risk to enjoy the presence of the Lord. Have you found that risk is a part yeah, of that? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. You have to just. You know, we, we want to be right. You never want to be. I in love error. being right. Yeah, I, but I mean, in, it, we know, we don't want to be in error. Yeah, you know, we don't want to be deceived. I mean, those are always concerns. But, but we're we're requ it's almost like I'm required. It's almost like I have to be willing to fail to succeed. Yeah, and yeah. and that's a, it's a huge part of our culture. So we don't always get it right. So then we clean up the mess. But it's yeah. it's like it, Chris does this well. He he presents. Uh, the two sides of a company, Apple Computers, for mm -hmm. example, research and development yep. and manufacturing. Well, your values in those two worlds are completely different. Manufacturing, you want zero defects. Yep. Every product works perfectly. It looks just like the other. <laughs> we, yeah, yeah. we don't want to recall. We yeah. don't have to, you yeah. know. But on research and development, if zero defect is your primary value, you won't invent anything. You won't mm -hmm. create anything. And so in character, we want to we want to carry that zero defect value. We want to say, you know what, there's no excuse for sin. Let's hold each other accountable. Right. Let's yeah. let's live in purity for Christ. But when it comes to ministry, when it comes especially to areas that are in the Bible that we don't know anyone who's who's really living in fully, mm -hmm. we experiment. Mm -hmm. And that makes a lot of people nervous, but that yeah. is that is the nature of it. And sometimes we succeed, and when we do, it's usually big. And when we fail, it's usually big. Yeah. <laughs> and so th there's a there's a mess to clean up. But that's we have almost like uh, the unspoken agreement in our in our family, in our leadership team. Is uh, research and development means we're going to yeah. we're going to create room to to see if we can learn together, stay accountable, uh, but let's see if we can learn this thing together and and touch into some things that are in the Word that are not the normal part of church life. Yeah, and so that's one of the ways that we, and it's not just the leaders. We want our people to be have yeah, a yeah, yeah. great character in like yeah. the, in the manufacturing, but yeah. also to walk with the Lord. And to just experience what the Lord has for them yep. uh, in, in a variety. Knowing that Scripture, I think you talk about it, Scripture doesn't limit all the experiences we have, but it it sets a trajectory for the sorts of experiences that we yeah, can have. Yeah, exactly. There are lists in the Bible. The lists don't contain God. They reveal God. Mm -hmm. They don't restrict what he can do. They reveal the nature of what he does. Yeah, it's it's a huge part of my own family history, so that's that's important for me. Absolutely. So from the top, I, I just say, hey, listen, I've been here since 1991, been under your leadership since '94, so '95, yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, and uh, uh, we <coughs> never taught uh, this experience that I see described on the web as grave sucking. <laughs> never taught it, never done it. I teach regularly in the school of ministry, and then the dean of school of ministry, which is not something we teach or preach. No, and so no, it's. No, no. It's a it is a bit alarming to sit in Reading and see the world think you think something, and you know you don't. I, I'll tell you, I don't know if that's happened to any of our listeners, but it is odd 
Yeah, like, how could you believe that about us without checking in with us or knowing? Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and th- and then you've taught us early on. I think we're changing. We've had to change this, but you you generally wouldn't respond to critics yeah. and come into a stance of opposition. And we all tried to model that early on. I, I think we still are trying to do that, but <laughs> but we would just be like, oh no, no, we're not gonna we're not gonna be drawn into defensive battles. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. Yeah, I, my approach, you know, is is pretty much the same. Yeah. I mean, well, we got it from you, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> I I just figure if God doesn't defend me, I'm not worth defending. Mm-hmm. You know, let him let him run my defense. But there there was a time several years back um, where there were some attacks in a newspaper, and I gave a one Sunday response. Yeah, and it was because of how how young believers can be affected. Yeah. That that was yeah, a concern. True. So I. I think it's appropriate to give a defense, yep. uh, but not to attack or retaliate or any of that kind of well, stuff. And to give understanding, because lots of folks aren't attacking, they're just wondering at some point. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like uh, helpful to be able to say to them, exactly. like, hey, listen, this is not a practice exactly. that we do. But yeah. it, it does, uh, it does, I don't know, gently, it's not holy, but it irks me. Like, how would you think this and perpetuate this myth when it's something I'm in the environment, regularly teaching and living with these people, and this is not a practice that we are participating in and yeah. that we we teach or and certainly not with the in the the connections that people have made. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, every once in a while, like just be like, I'm not going to talk about that thing because it's so <laughs> dumb. Like you know, it's, it's almost like the question: Have you stopped beating your wife? Like if I actually say yes or no I, by implication, I'm guilty just from your question. So I'm not going to address your question. But over time, that that yeah. probably used to work before the internet and. And now every once in a while somebody Good discovers point. an old video or an old something rather like, hey, do you guys? Like, no, yeah, no, yeah. we don't. So hopefully yeah, this, exactly. this time of uh, talking will help put that to rest a little bit. It, it, may, it may in part come out of the fact that I have really felt strong from the Lord that we are to honor those who have gone before us. Mm-hmm. And it's a huge part of our culture. You know, the, we're, we're uh, going to be building this revival uh uh, museum, library, library mm-hmm. a house of generals, where we give honor to people who have gone before us, and some of them ended poorly. And uh, but we're 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 going to try to honor them anyway. I mean, the way the scripture honors Solomon, he ended pretty pretty poorly. Hezekiah the same. Yeah. So that's the mandate. And so I I've gone to graves, I've prayed, but I don't. We don't talk to the dead. We don't yeah. try to get something from the dead. I mean, that's. Yeah. But I will. I'll I'll kneel. I'll humble myself before the Lord. I pray, uh, Charles Finney. God, we we need that kind of an awakening in our nation again, and and I will go there, and and I'm sure that uh, I I suppose some of uh, the rumor comes out of that that the that we will humble ourselves mm-hmm. and and I've been I I remember in Wales I went to the the very not only Evan Roberts' grave but I went to the church where the power of God hit him so powerfully, mm-hmm. and I just I literally sat where he sat for I think maybe two hours I just sat and just prayed. Yeah. I'm not talking to the dead. Yeah. I'm not. I, I'm not interested in conversation with angels. I, you know, when you have the Holy Spirit, why would you want to talk to anyone else? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and so I'm. I'm just asking God, do it again. Just do it again. So it's a it's a huge topic, and it would go all over. But you've just mentioned. So there are places of significance that are like a touchstone for our faith. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Not just our faith, but even other things we care about. Like I've been at the Lincoln Memorial, and you're like, my goodness, the exactly. sacrifice of. Those men, the lost of lives, the articulation of the yeah. vision that he had, and I feel like, wow, uh, yeah. you, I get to be in touch with my Americanism at some yeah. level, my patriotism, yeah. and so these places, like we've, we've joked, the upper room, like in Israel, I don't know if you know this, uh, <laughs> it's not the real upper room, by the way, that thing's <laughs> way under the dirt at some point, but but you've been there, I yeah. haven't, yeah. and you would say it's a touchstone, it is, and that that you've experienced the Lord's presence in that. Oh yeah, yeah, we've had mighty things happen yeah. in that environment. And it may just be because people have been going there for so many years praying yeah. that, you know, there's just this thing that happens there. It doesn't matter to me how or what it is. It's just they they stir up all kinds of memories, emotions, scripture. You you see what happened in the original upper room and how significant that was. That uh, It's just a place to really, well, it's a contact point for faith, yeah. the way you put it. I think, I think it's beautiful. Well, yeah. and to be super clear, sometimes a quote of yours is attributed to this idea that, we're actually going to graves looking for anointings to be, you know, to, to get and to pass on. Um, there are anointings, mantles, revelations, and mysteries that have lain unclaimed <laughs> literally where they were left because the generation that walked in them never passed them on. I believe it's impossible for us to recover realms of anointing, realms of insight. Sorry, I believe it's possible 
for us to recover <laughs> realms of anointing, uh, realms of insight, realms of God that have been uh, untended for decades simply by choosing to reclaim them and perpetuate them for future generations. So at that point, you're talking about in you know, honor and faith. It, what I felt the Lord sp speak to my heart like 20 years ago when I first started collecting for our, our library museum mm -hmm. was that if we honored the saints of the past, not worship, not talk to for sure, um, but if we honored them, the Lord would give us access to their the grace that they lived in. You know, there's so many things that previous generations accomplished that are, you know, the anointing on a Spurgeon, his, oh, his yeah. ability, uh, Wesley, to preach to Whitfield, mm -hmm. that their anointings we need again. Absolutely. And uh, and 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 so I, I feel like we have a role to value and respect the person who said yes to God, mm -hmm. the Spirit of God that marked them to bring such change. And so that's what I try to do as I try to honor that element, the Spirit of God, the person who said yes. And it's not it's not worship. It's just it's the right thing to do. And so that's what we do. And so that's why I feel, you know, way back. I think it's twenty years ago now, uh, where the Lord I've really impressed on my heart. We need to do this library museum, and and in some way, just in life, to honor these people that have gone before us, because God will release into the earth not all about Bethel, certainly not all no. about me, yeah. but release into the earth again what He's done in past, in past generations. And that's what I'm hungry for. Yeah. Probably two things, you know, the scripture is full of that. The scripture is full of honoring the, the encounters these past saints have had with the Lord, yes. which are supposed to inspire us <laughs> yeah. to have like encounters and like impact in the earth. And so I, I think one thing around that same time was I, I had been through seven years of higher learning with, um, you know, in, in Christian community and had not heard hardly anything about the healing revivalists. So mm -hmm. I was a bit like, where where were these stories yeah. In all the church history that was covered, yeah. where were these um, these stories of, of, of uh, revival that had signs and wonders and manifestations anointing them? Like these folks were lost from history. Uh, Mariah Woodworth Eder, yeah. I hadn't heard anything about John G. Lake. I hadn't heard anything about. So I'm I'm in seven years mm -hmm. of evangelical, whom I love. I'm an evangelical. <laughs> Kisses. The uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> the uh, but but to have like wow, we've been kind of embarrassed or or just didn't care or choose to remember the radical sacrifice yeah. and impact and power these folks moved in. And for me, that was eye-opening. So when I heard you say that statement, yeah. I'm like, hey, hey there's, a, there's a forgotten move of, of the Holy Spirit and power that yes, yes. the church has shied away from. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And we have a responsibility. It's a responsibility of honor, mm -hmm. but it's also a responsibility to preserve the testimony because that's the spoken and or written record of what God has done, yeah. which prophesies his intent into this generation. And if we don't steward the testimony well, the record of his nature, mm -hmm. the displays of his covenant with people, if we don't steward that well, we're not really prepared for what he wants to do again. Yeah. And so it, they're all intertwined. It's our responsibility to serve this generation well, you know. Yeah, so yeah. when we hear those stories, it's actually, this is what's possible in the Lord. Yes. And that's kind of what we're after. Exactly. Uh, you know, uh, as far as a touchstone, I was at Nyack and I, um, college in New York, and I happened to see A.B. Simpson's grave is there. So as we're touring the campus, who was there. And it was it was meaningful to just be, uh, again, not to, you know, have some weird, like I'm, there's a special anointing here, but again, to go, this man was mightily uh, used by the Lord. Absolutely. And uh, was, uh, you know, he was empowering women in ministry way before that time. He was... He had uh, racial unity was going on in his ministry. He was ministering to the poor of New York, doing yeah, a radically yeah, beautiful yeah. work. And being in his grave, and, and also it was connected to also some of the martyrs uh, that, that that denomination, the CMA, has experienced as well, and feeling like, well, there's a weight and a gravitas to, wow. Wow. to these experiences again. And, and we it's a disservice when we act like these aren't important or aren't real. But again, so for clear, we're not going to graves sucking the anointing <laughs> out of them, but we no, are not afraid no. of like uh, of honoring and revering what God's done through the saints in the past. No, that's right. That's right. So being a non-charismatic uh, and it kind of coming, and then there's all this risk happening. And I, I affectionately, uh, at least I think I coined the phrase spooky church because so many things happened that were just spooky to me. And I, I'd like go home and go, oh, Lord, what are we doing? I want to talk about all those right now because we can talk about those in other podcasts. But I was on a 10 or 12 year, you know, still am. Like when I see something unusual happen, Lord, I'm like, I try to like, instead of just judging it, immediately go, 
Holy Spirit, is that you? How much of it is you? Yeah. What do I make of it? Yeah. And knowing the response of my heart to that in the moment, it actually says a lot about how I'm growing in the Lord, yeah. you know, in that moment. So this idea though, um, uh, whenever I was gonna write about grave sucking, just like, we don't do this, leave us alone, stop saying this. I, there is a, a story from a school of ministry though that I do think it's instructive. So I'll, I'll unpack that. And, and I never know, like, if I'm, am I sharing too much and I'm gonna freak people out here more. But in our culture where we're actually experiencing the presence of the Lord and inviting people to, to experience the Lord's presence, unusual things happen things that actually are called God that aren't, but it takes a while to figure that out. Sometimes uh, I would say that, you know, the Lord hits somebody and maybe, again, I'm making up this percentage, but it's 10% God and 90% the person, but that's 10% more of God than they ever had before. So, you know, you're on this journey, yeah. you know, of like, I've just got to, I've, I've got to, with the community, with our feedback with each other, uh, you know, kind of, walk these journeys of risk. So in the school of ministry, we had, one of our leaders had a profound encounter with the Lord uh, at the grave of a former church leader. So wow. he comes back and gives a testimony about this. And because our students are so hungry, <laughs> I mean, it's like meat to a wolf at some level. Like, you're kidding? The Lord will meet you at a grave? So it, it, I remember in that as the yeah. dean watching it, like, whoa, what, what? But, but I've had to learn over time, like, if I try to kill something too early, that's, that's we good. we totally yeah. miss the potentially the good things and again the weird things that come but when i kill everything too early our people our students stop stop taking risks so that's, that's the number huge. one thing that's huge you so when you if you're like that will embarrass us that that's that's kind of dangerous that could go wrong well looks we won't do anything we have that about money like money's dangerous don't stay near it you know don't do anything with money you know <laughs> uh, leadership's dangerous you know you can do it wrong don't be a leader i mean like yeah People, if you just are qu quickly, constantly trying to keep us safe from all mistakes, yeah. you will miss out on amazing things the Lord has. So, and, and one of the things you end up doing is you end up killing the actual work that God is doing. Absolutely. I mean, that's what Jesus, his warning with the wheat and the tares. He said, don't try to pull the tares out because you will pull out the wheat. Yeah. In other words, it's unfortunate there's tares there, yeah. <laughs> but there's also wheat there. Yep. And so let them grow into maturity and you'll be able to tell the difference. And that's, that's part of uh, the warning that the Lord gives us is that, you know, if we try to keep everything squeaky clean always, because I do like perfection, I do like things organized mm -hmm. and accurate, but if I'm obsessive about that, I'll actually hinder and, and affect negatively the work that God was doing, that 10% you make reference yeah. to. Yeah, I think it's like, I love being right. I think you do too, but it's like the weirdest thing in the Lord. Like you can't, you have to lay down that, yeah. Love of being right yeah, to like exactly. let people experience this who God is and what He's up to. I mean, when you think about the early church moving from the Old Testament, it's like circumcision is the heart; it is the sign of the covenant people. And you know what? Eight to ten years, maybe fifteen years afterwards, they're like, you know, <laughs> to be a Jesus follower, you don't have to do that thing that's in the Old Testament. So it's this yeah. incredible thing where they are risking into this foundational teaching of the Old Testament. It, it is morphed into baptism. There's a new sign of the covenant people that isn't exclusive to men, but it goes is for women as well. So yeah. I, there is this thing in the Lord where he is beckoning us further into his That's presence right. and into his leadership and his articulation. So I've had to like not panic <laughs> yeah. about what people will think yeah. or endure what people will think and just go, the Lord's in this. We, gotta, we don't know how, what the end result is, what it'll look like, but the Lord's in this. I mean, and I'm sure when the, Disciples heard Jesus say, don't worry, she's only sleeping. They're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, she's it's not. It's like, what if, the, oh my goodness. So uh, anyway, we, we're on this journey. So the students hear this testimony, and I, this is, well, I talk, I talk about this, this is a good problem. Every pastor in America would want this problem, that we give a testimony of God's encounter, and our people reflexively go, I want that. I mean. I want more of that. <laughs> like, you can, the Lord's over there, I'm coming. And so... This is a beautiful, like, like the grace sucking is an unfortunate result of a beautiful hunger yeah, for the true. presence of God. And again, yeah. when the critic labels it, I'm like, oh, this is actually a problem you'd want. You'd want your people so zealous for the Lord's presence that you have to be cautious about what you say because they will move to it. So I think we got guys like Ben Fitzgerald, who's you know a worldwide ev evangelist, yeah. one of our guys, we love him to pieces. He's got a, a video online about like, he's just hungry. He's yeah. hungry and he's like, I'll, whatever it takes, I'll cross oceans, I'll do whatever to experience the presence of the Lord. And so that thing is the heart that we're building. Yeah. Now, so this, this idea of grave suck, sucking as a practice was so, it, it's just like a, almost uh, a weird demonic assault against this beautiful hungry heart yeah. 
that it became, I was even just resentful of, I'm not even going to talk about that. Yeah. I'm not going to talk about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, just, it, it's nothing could misrepresent yes. what we live and practice in community, accountable. Yep. You know, nothing could, could yep. e even if it would have been mentioned by one of our team members, it would have been in jest. It would have been, you know, in Well, no, the, it actually, uh, I know where you're going with this, but he had this one team member had real experiences, had a real incredible experience that kind of helped light a fire. Yeah, yeah. But again, once it got, once it kind of got traction, I, yeah, the, the term grave sucking, I, because I'm a bit snarky, I was actually thought it was, Delightful. Early on, I went, "Oh gosh, if you're going to purposely misunderstand that much," and then I'm like, "Well done, sir." <laughs> but the, but over time, you're like, "Okay." It, in the age of the internet, and yeah, yeah. and as our footprint got bigger, you know, when we're smaller, it's not as painful, you know. Like, but exactly. but as our footprint gets bigger, and then people are like, "Hey," and then they perpetuate lies. Um, you're like, "Oh, that 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 does hurt." It's, yeah, yeah, that's tough. It does. So there's a picture of your wife Benny being uh, laying down on a grave, and yeah, that is actually yeah, yeah. like. So when we say we don't practice this, you're like, ah, oh, we have photographic evidence of <laughs> Benny laying on the grave. What, what, what is she doing? What's her story in that? What's what's up to? What's you know, our there? whole deal is we we want to respond to God in a way that He wants us to respond. Mm -hmm. If I kneel, if I dance, I've shouted, I've danced before the Lord. I'll lay prostrate before the Lord, and it's that's all it is. Is it's we want to be. Uh, responsive enough to his impressions that will do whatever he says to do and risk looking like a fool in the process risk being misunderstood in the process it doesn't uh, you know there's no you know, you don't get bonus points for being ridiculed but it is it's just oh no if you're afraid of ridicule you'll never do anything great for god i yeah. mean you just, any 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 great leader in any field has no. had you know, opponents critics and ridicule and mocking yeah I, the uh, you know what? The, 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 when the Holy Spirit hit, and in uh, joy that uh, was praises in known languages, people went, they're drunk. Yeah. I mean, in in the instant, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there are people who go, oh, that yeah, that they're drunk. Yeah. So you you won't do anything in God if you are perpetually trying to please everybody, which is another part. Like I'm always saying to the, <laughs> our team, like the internet's always mad about something. I mean, like I'm not gonna. I'm not going to let them uh, control our agenda by what they're exactly, mad about because exactly. there's a part of the internet that's just a machine of rage and frustration. And like, yeah. it'll never be satisfied. Yeah. So that, I don't think either one of us wants to speak to that that thing because no, no. it's unsatiable. <clears throat> but there no. are fellow saints who are like, I just need to know yeah, yeah. <laughs> that you guys We're, are safe and yeah. not... Not super weird. Spooky, but not super weird. Yeah. <laughs> We're willing to do whatever we feel like you said to do. I mean, you know, honestly. Uh, so that moment, Benny's responding to the, the leadership, yeah. the, 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 the promptings of the Holy Spirit in that moment. Yeah, yeah. it looks strange. Yeah. You know, I, I get it. Yeah. I've, I've been in those places, too, where my response was not something I'd want filmed, but it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's uh, some of the great evangelists have described their prayer time behind closed doors said, well, you know, we wouldn't want that filmed. It's their cry to God. You know, it, it would look strange to the, to the outsider looking in, uh, the tears, the weeping, the mm -hmm. whatever it may be before the Lord. Um, you know, there are just, they're just times where we respond intimately to Him. And, uh, and it's not always... It's not always squeaky clean. It's just honest. Mm -hmm. And so we, we create room in how we do life that, you know, I might not get it right. I, I may next week go, ah, I shouldn't have done that. No, but that's, right. that is how we do life. No, it's, I remember around this time, people were like, well, there's the passage in Ezekiel where uh, the dead guy was thrown in and they touched, it's not in Ezekiel, sorry, it's about the prophet. Yeah, it's, uh, in, it's in the prophet. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, where the bones touched the dead bones of the prophet. And then, uh, and so even someone in our team was like wondering like, hey, is there something to be like, hey, ooh, no, no, no. Like what? Uh, we're not going there. Are we saying an anointing is seeking through, uh, you know, a concrete vault and up through, like, like, and that the dirt, like, no. But I do remember as we were wondering aloud, and we, Beth, exactly. we'll do this. We will wonder aloud, and then we will kind of yeah. go like, whoa, what you're not saying is this. Like, oh, no, I'm not saying that. So, yeah, yeah. so we, we um, I know as even in that season, there was some articulation that we had to kind of go, hey, that that's not what's happening. Whatever you think is happening with a God encounter. Yeah. It ain't that. Yeah. And then we talk through, you know, the implications of that. Yeah, and, yeah. and and so there's a kind of a self-correcting that we'll do, but we will noodle, uh, you know, and, and wonder and experience a while as we're pressing forward. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. So that's that's kind of how we think about it. And people have to realize, what is, they, they write us, what does Bethel think about? I'm like, well, there's Bill and the whole apostolic team. So even on our team, we think some different things sometimes. Absolutely. Like 
we talk to each other. We probably have some different ideas about the end times, about various things, about the, the mechanism, how things work. But that's part of our beauty is we don't have giant groupthink in some ways. We will we will listen to the, the other uh, yeah. people who are encountering the Lord in this. Uh, there's other folks that have a different maybe perspective on this. We know that um, uh, you know the, the Catholics have a uh, have relics and have something in their theology for relics and and the, the bones of the saints. That wouldn't be something that would. You know, we are participating in or interested in. But again, we're not trying to kill them over that. That would be like, ah, we pr- prefer you don't. We don't We don't know that there's a lot of, um, there's a lot in that for us. <laughs> yeah. But we don't need to separate from you. No, that's right. You know, because of this. And so there, there, are, um, there are other groups that might have a different perspective. But this would be where we land on this. And hopefully it sets the record straight and it becomes the dominant. Hopefully the truth of what we actually do becomes... Uh, yeah. the dominant uh, articulation that's out there. <laughs> One can wish. One can wish. <laughs> <laughs>